Welcome to Longmont Voices and Vision, a project of Longmont Public Media. In the midst of the darkest period in our lives, when we're bombarded 24 hours a day with news of the coronavirus and the human and economic carnage it's causing in our society, we're challenged to cope with our fears and anxieties while remaining hopeful about what lies on the other side of this crisis. This project presents an opportunity for Longmont residents to share with others how they're adjusting to new realities of social distancing and the kind of future they hope to experience on the other side of the crisis. I'm Tim Waters, host of these conversations and a Longmont Public Media volunteer. In this series, I'll be asking Longmont residents, many of them your friends and neighbors, three questions. What are you doing to get through this crisis? Even though we cannot be together right now, how are we staying connected to friends and families? And what's the future you are hoping to see and experience on the other side of this crisis? I hope you'll stay with this series and enjoy listening to your friends and neighbors and learn from them how they're getting through and what they're looking forward to in a new reality on the other side. Christine Pacheco Sims, thank you so much for your willingness to contribute to this Longmont Voices and Vision project. And uh, I'm going to ask you in just a second to talk about yourself. But before I do that, I also want to thank you for your contributions to the city of Longmont for what you do every day uh, as, as a part of the Longmont team and the, the specific segments of our community that you serve. So. Thanks for that in the long run, and thanks this morning for your contribution to this project. So tell us about you. Well, thank you for having me, Tim. Um, I'm Christina Pacheco Sims. I manage the Children, Youth, and Families Division for the City of Longmont. Um, I have worked um, with the City of Longmont for years um, and have worked in Boulder County um, since um, 1995, so have been a while. Um, I enjoy work um, with children, youth, and families, and enjoy uh, providing public service to the community. That's that's a passion that I have. We get a chance to do that every day, so and we appreciate it. You know, I'm going to ask you three questions. Uh, the first of the three questions is this: in this uh, we're in a period of history that's unprecedented for me and I think for anybody alive today. I was reminded by one of your colleagues that it's not unprecedented, unprecedented in all of human history, but certainly none of us have ever experienced anything like what we're going through right now. Uh, and with all, the, uh, with all of the drama and the fear associated with it, share with us, how are you getting through this? Well, you know, I, I've heard um, you know, many people refer to what we're having to go through as social distancing. Um, and I really prefer to call it, um, really it's about physical distancing. Um, it isn't about that social isolation. Um, it's really looking at how we connect differently with, uh, with individuals and about those daily daily phone calls. It's about utilizing the technology that we have. Um, you know, I think that as um, you know, the the realm that I work in is is social work, um, and oftentimes we don't lean on technology as much. And I think that um, we've done that more. And I think it has been um, very helpful to um, lean on that in, in this time. Um, and that is a way that we have been able to connect, um, connect socially in that way. So um, you've already begun to answer part of the second question, or you partly answered the second question, and that is, in this time of physical distancing and and uh, and under a stay-at-home order, 
How are you staying connected with your friends and family? Um, definitely through through phone calls, through social media, um, through texts, through FaceTime. Um, definitely, I have leaned on that more. Um, I think I, I'm from Southern Colorado, um, and I think that's where that's where most of my my family is. Um, and I, I talk to my mom at least once a day. Um, she'll be 90 in uh, September. And uh, one of the things that, so I come from a family, uh, I'm the youngest of eight. Um, and so with that, um, the, the plan that, that my family has um, for my mom because of her age and her risk category um, is that she has uh, contact with one of my brothers. So my brother spends um, the day with her. Um, and so he has spent every day with her for the last month and the rest of us call and, and talk with her. Um, and so that's how I stay connected with her. But um, if I were fortunate enough to live, um, live close to her, um, what she does with my other siblings is they actually um, drive, drive around um, in the car and they'll drive up to my sister's house and uh, just kind of talk to them from a, from a distance just so they can see each other. So I think that's a pretty unique way for families to, uh, families to connect. Um, and I think that there are, are some families that, that are doing that. But for me, it's, it's mostly um, through technology and through telephone. But I think that's a pretty unique way. Yeah, well, we're, we're all getting way more familiar and skilled huh, at use of technologies like Zoom. And, and I've heard a lot from respondents about the use of the telephone way more <laughs> than right, in, in right. past months or years. Yeah. Right. I don't particularly um, enjoy talking on the telephone after, um, after the work day is over, but I find myself using it more and more. Yeah. Yeah. What was an outdated technology has become kind of central to our connections right now. Absolutely. So the third question is, uh, the, and there's assumption or a presumption uh, behind the question or that underlines the question that whatever was normal for us prior to the pandemic and stay at home orders and all that we've gone through, whatever becomes normal on the other side of this, whatever the new normal is, life's going to be different. So my question for you is, what would you like to see? What is your preferred future in the new normal? And, and in that new normal, what would you be willing or like to help create? You know, I, I was, um, I saw, I read a quote the other day and I, I because I knew we were gonna, we were gonna have this interview. Um, and the quote that I found, let me read it. Nothing should go back to normal. Normal wasn't working. If we go back to the way things were, we'll lost, we will have lost the lesson. May we rise up and do better. And so I think what, um, what this last month has forced us to do is to slow down, um, is to um, really look at valuing those human connections um, and really um, take stock in what's important. Um, and I think that um, we need to continue to stay focused on that, whether it's um, looking out for our um, neighbors that are, are less fortunate or less able, um, I think we need to continue to do that moving forward. Um, we need to continue to reach out to um, those in our community that are less able, less fortunate. Um, reach out to those in our families, uh, those family members that, that need us um, and do what we need to do to support them. Um, that's what I hope that we don't lose sight of moving forward. That's very aspirational. Very well said. Christina Pacheco Sims, thank you so much for what you do every day. Thank you for your contribution again to this project. Take care of yourself, stay safe and healthy, and take care of your family. Thank you, Council Member Waters. Take care. Dale Rademacher, 
deputy city manager. Thank you uh, so much, both for your contributions to the city and to the community, and now your contributions to this Longmont Voices and Vision project. Each of these interviews, we've started by um, wanting to learn something about the interviewee. So tell us about Dale Radebaker, and then we'll get into some questions. Well, I appreciate it, uh, Tim, and I appreciate you doing this work because I do think it's, uh, it's important for our community and uh, for future generations to understand. Um, so who is Dale? Well, he's, uh, he's a guy that's been at the city for about 37 years. Um, I've been incredibly fortunate to be able to uh, work my entire career uh, in my hometown, um, which um, I don't think uh, many people get that chance and that opportunity. And so that brings with it um, great, great enjoyment, great satisfaction, and also great responsibility. Um, because folks know not only you, but they know your parents and they know your parents. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so you're constantly, or I feel I'm constantly uh, needing to be sure that I'm doing the best we can every day. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been in uh, public service here for the city now for, for quite a while. And, um, you know, certainly going through this pandemic is, 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 is a new one. I, I think we are up against a, a, uh, a foe or a, a challenge uh, like we've never seen. Certainly yeah. nothing. I have seen in my lifetime. Um, and it is, uh, it's both an opportunity and it can be troubling, but um, honestly, I, I, I see us as a, a community. Um, I always look for good in things. I look, I look for the good in people. I look for the good in, in what we can learn from the challenges that are put in front of us um, and, and to, um, Always stay focused that way, and 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 frankly, also uh, to realize all of the blessings that we each have. Um, because the way I look at it is, uh, I'm incredibly blessed. I'm I'm uh, I'm healthy. I haven't caught it. Uh, obviously, I know folks who have, but um, most, with the exception of about two, have survived. And um, so you're going to be blessed about that. We're going to get through it. Uh, we're going to learn a lot. At least I hope to heck we learn a lot. And I think it is going to fundamentally change um, us as a community, and certainly how we do business, how we how we serve the city. I think is fundamentally changing. And we're it's always odd when you're in the middle of the change. It's difficult sometimes to um, know what's happening in the in the immediate, let alone what's going to be happening in the next six months, eight months, you know, a year. So all I can say is it's it's a good time to be nimble. It's a time to be open to new ideas. It's an, it's a it's trying to be um, frankly searching for new ways of doing things uh, and not uh, not holding on too much to the past. Um, so. Um, you've you've begun to answer uh, actually the first two of these questions, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them anyway, and and that is for for anybody you know alive today, uh, we've never experienced the kind of physical separation and social isolation that we're experiencing right now, um, and you've begun to answer how you're getting yourself through this already, but what else should we hear about how Dale Rademacher is getting himself yeah. through this this unprecedented moment in history? So you know, you 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 uh, we're all dealing dealing with the 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 pandemic on uh, likely on our professional uh, work as well as with our families and with our friends. Um, it, it's it's challenging. I think it's a very human thing to want to be together, um, and I don't think that's going to get washed out of our DNA anytime soon. I hope it doesn't. Um, what it will mean though, is before we can do that openly and freely. In other words, before we can be sitting down at, uh, at um, uh, a Broncos football game around 70,000 other people, my guess is 
it could be weird. We might be sitting down there with a bunch of masks on, as, you know, and trying to yell through a mask. That's going to be hard. But my guess is we'll figure that out. But, you know, we're using it as, uh, you know, my wife, uh, Karen, and I are both working from home. She, of course, has the much nicer office. I, I'm stuck out on the, uh, the game table room in the family room, but um, we're actually finding it as a time where um, we're able to take long walks at night. Um, uh, we're not commuting uh, into our offices every day. And so in, in that way, again, very blessed and, and fortunate. All of our family, my, my children are all fine. They're all working from home. They're all being very creative on how they're doing it. We're having a lot of Zoom uh, family meetings like this. Um, and, um, and, and frankly, again, finding ways to connect with each other, uh, which I think is a, a fundamental human thing. You know, professionally, we're having lots of fun. Um, we, we have uh, staff who are just at the beginning of their career. And, um, and, and I think, so if we think back, Tim, if you and I were in our mid-20s right now and just starting our career, wouldn't that be exciting? It would be like, wow, we are going to move away from the olden days quickly now, I tell you. But, you know, so we're doing stuff. So instead of us all standing around um, getting a cup of coffee uh, in the break room, we, we have a 15 or 30 minute uh, um, Zoom meeting where we all get together and talk and show our pets and again connect with each other as people. You know that connection is remote, but it doesn't have to be broken. So, uh, and professionally, it, it's also key to, I think, when you're uh, a leader in this time, you absolutely have to pay attention to your staffs, um, their biggest fears. Um, the challenges that they each are experiencing, whether it's at their home or office or at their work, and connecting with them. To me, this is a time where um, good leaders um, demonstrate that. They demonstrate it by listening, by paying attention, by um, we've gone out and, and collected our folks. We were in a uh, the parks folks, we, we got them together in a parking lot. You know, we can't get together in a building, but we can social distance in a parking lot and um, talk about how things are going, what they're up against, and um, still making that, that human connection. We're not hugging. I said, you know, we don't get to hug anybody anymore and else you know them really, really well. <laughs> then you can't. So, you know, I think it's, it's, it's challenging us all to think of things differently, to uh, demonstrate our concern and care for each other differently. Um, and I actually like it. I mean, I, I look at it and I go, yeah, that's, that's sort of cool. Um, uh, you, you just don't know though. You, you don't know, um, everybody's very different, I guess is the way I'd say going through this. Um, and that's hard, to, that's hard to, you know, appreciate. Um, because I can also, I can see that for some, this is potentially the worst time of their life, scariest time of their life. And boy, I'd be there too. If I had lost my job or if I was sick or if my loved ones were sick, I'd be thinking that too. It'd be scary. So I think it's, I think it's just staying in touch with people and uh, maintaining um, trust, maintaining our trust and confidence in each other. To the extent we can do that, and we'll we'll get through it. So yeah, that's you, how I'm managing it. You've uh, you, you've touched maybe as much as you want to on how you stand connected with family and friends, but in this time of stay-at-home orders and and uh, in all of the the requirements that we remain separated. Anything else we should know from you about how you're staying connected to family and friends? I know you're part of a large family mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and in, it's, it's spread out in a lot of places. And uh, what, else, what else should we know about the Rademacher family and how you're staying connected with family and friends? Well, we, we have the full range, as you can imagine. So um, I have a cousin who is a Catholic priest and he is um, 
uh, having mass every day um, at his parents' house where he is taking care of his two parents. And um, that's a cool way to stay connected. I, I, I certainly didn't go to mass every day <laughs> before this. And, and to be honest, I'm not going every day now, but I am checking in occasionally. Um, and so that's, a, that's, you know, we would not have stayed in touch that way um, had it not been for this pandemic. Um, my sister lives on the, on the same property that I do. And so um, we, we are connecting in ways, going on walks again, um, staying in touch with each other, calling each other. I have called my, uh, you know, that, that good old telephone. It's a, it's a pretty good way to, to talk to people and um, ways that I wouldn't have done before because I would have said I'm too busy I've got too much going on, and doggone it, I, I, I just can't carve out the time. So I think it's, again, I, I'm, I'm always going to look for the, the positive that, um, so, so what's the downside? The downside is I can't, I can't go uh, give my mother a hug. I, I can see her through the window. And, and that's, that was our Easter this year. It was, how are you doing, Mom? Love you, um, and um, the problem with mom is she can't see. She's got macular degeneration, so she can't. <laughs> she can't see us. Um, but we were we were uh, able to talk. Um, so um, it's not without emotion. Uh, that's always going to be there. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, that, that is a, uh, that's probably an Easter though I'm going to remember more than others. So. This will be a, this will be a, a memorable Easter for all of us for, for reasons we'd rather not remember, but it will be memorable. <laughs> we, we, a lot of us celebrated Easter just the way you just described. So I think we'll be talking about it with our kids and grandkids for, for uh, yeah. decades. Well, and you have to really feel for the class of, 2020, whether you're a high school senior or a college senior, and all the losses that go along. Yeah. yeah. That's Dale, my, my third. That's my sister. My, my sister's yeah. son is a, is a senior. And uh, of course, baseball was his sport. And so, um, yeah. He did not get a graduation, but he doesn't get to play a sport. And, and Matthew said it really well. He said, you know, what really bums me is. I didn't know on that last day that that would be uh, the last day that we're in class together. Yeah. And that, I told him, I said, you know what, Matthew? You're all still here. You will have an opportunity to get together. It may be in August or September, but you, you will find a time to do that. And it will be so important. My guess is you'll all figure out a way to do it. So do that. But Dale, my third question, as you know, uh, is based on this, this assumption that uh, whatever life is like on the other side of the pandemic, it's going to be different than it was before we got into stay-at-home orders and, and all of that that's associated with or the reasons for it, that whatever was normal then, there's going to be a new normal. And the new normal will be different than the way it was. So the question is, What's your preferred future? What would you like to see? And what are you willing to help work to create on the other side of this? A couple of things. So I'm, I'm going to, from my perspective, what this is demonstrating to us is the value of health care in our country and in the world around us. Um, I think what we're seeing is um, certainly those populations where um, healthcare is not as readily available, or their general health is not where it should otherwise be because of a lack of healthcare. So one thing I hope for, I hope we as a country can honestly get our act together and understand that healthcare is a, a basic human right. It is not something to be um, uh, allocated, if you will, based on who can, who can afford the best insurance or who can afford the best doctors. I think we're witnessing that. I think we're all witnessing that right now. The question is, what do we do about it? 
we either make our peace with it and say, well, that's really unfortunate that that happened, or we say, no, that's not acceptable. And so I want to be part of changing that dialogue, uh, be part of uh, a movement to say that that isn't how we should go forward. That's one thing. The other thing I think we need to really double down in the country on is um, support of higher education, support of uh, basic research and development. You know, what this country really used to be about back in the, in the 50s and 60s, when there was a huge and a phenomenal effort at basic research, and that they understood that that was a that was a federal, that was a, an obligation of all of us. It's not an obligation of the next big company to do uh, because they can make the most money off it. We, we need to really double down on, on basic research. And frankly, we need to get to a point where uh, we shorten this time where we get vaccines uh, in, 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 to, to the market. And we get them to the market in a way that's incredibly equitable and, and distributed rapidly. I don't think the coronavirus is going to be the last one that comes at us. Um, I guess the other thing I would say is that when we're in the middle of a crisis like we are right now, um, which is um, sort of the short-term midterm, like between now and the next 18 months, um, we can't lose sight of the longer-term issues that are also huge challenges to this country. And um, at the policy level, you know, the, the virus coupled together with the economic um, uh, downturn, it's going to make it all the more difficult to advance uh, transitions to things like um, clean energy, to, to uh, transition to uh, green build communities and to change the way our communities are designed and built. It's going to be far more easy. Uh, for people to push through ideas that, well, we, we can't change now, it's, it's too expensive, or we can't do something now because. So um, I would like to be part of an effort that says, okay, we get that, we get that, and where does that path get us in five or 10 years? We need, we need to not lose sight of the long term because we become so focused on the immediate. Um, and that's going to be a challenge. I think it's going to be a challenge at all levels of government. Um, so, you know, and, and the odd thing is, Tim, when, when it's like you and I, and we're, we're towards the end of our career, again, I'd love to be 25, because they are going to be part of a fundamental shift, uh, not only in the economy, but I think in the society um, and what it, what it means now to be a good American. What does that mean? Um, does that mean following public health orders? Does it mean um, reaching out to, to help your neighbor in ways that you maybe have never done? So <clears throat> that's my desired new future, you know, for our, our children, our grandchildren. I've got two little granddaughters that are less than a year old who um, are, um, won't remember a darn thing about this situation. But I believe the world they're going to grow up in is going to be very different than what it would have otherwise been. Um, and I can't, you know, I can't predict how that's going to be. But um, what I do know is I think the basic, um, again, desires of humans to interact and to be together is not going to go away. Um, that's what it means in mind to be human. Uh, we cannot dehumanize ourselves over this. Um, we have to be, we have to use the, <laughs> the thing on our shoulders and figure out um, ways to battle this thing. And again, it's not going to be the last one. Um, we will have more challenges. I, I think this is a, a bit of a wake up call for us all. Um, to really um, wonder, are we investing our money and are we coming forward with basic healthcare programs and policies that are um, equitable and um, 
blind to the uh, to your income or blind to your ethnicity. Um, I don't think we're there yet. I think we're getting a whole new set of data that's to suggest to us more work to be done. So I want to be part of that. I want to be part of saying, I, I, I want to be part of that change. I don't want to be part of holding on to what used to be. Neil, um, one of these days, uh, those two granddaughters of yours will have a chance to watch this interview and, and they'll know what Grandpa Dale was thinking about, what was on his mind and in his heart uh, at this point in history. So thanks for your willingness to share that. Thanks again for all your contributions to this community and take care of yourself and all those family members you just, <laughs> that you just included in this interview. Well, thank you, Tim, and thank you for doing this. And uh, I can't wait to see the, uh, the, final, the final product. All right. When we can get back out and our paths will cross, I'll look forward to that opportunity. You bet. Thanks.